love about them. So buckle up. Okay, let's, let's, I want to see the magic. It's not great yet. We're, I'm working on it. <laughs> bring me in, bring me into your world. Bring the listener in. Let's get sound okay. effects, little Foley work. <laughs> Just a lot of it's all I have is a water bottle, so it's gonna be yeah, crinkling. Just like crinkling, a lot of crinkling, a lot of dripping water. Um, oh, what a fun, awkward love. sound effect! That's great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is something I love about April. Uh, first time I met April, just great riffer right off the bat into riffing. I dig that. Sometimes we meet people and you don't know uh, how to talk at their face and engage them in conversation. Real easy with you. Pretty chill. Yeah, it's just like some, I get that, where some people, you like make a joke. They're kind of like, ha ha, uh-huh. And, and you're like, and oh, you're no. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, I feel like I offended you and I don't know how. <laughs> My just being, I just thought we were talking. Okay, that's, I'll just leave forever. I'll just, we'll never see each yeah, other like, again. It's I'm going to go and pretend to use the bathroom for 10 minutes and hope that you leave the room. I've done that before. We've <laughs> all done that before. We just don't admit it. Oh, it's, it's the worst. It's this socially agreed upon lie. Sometimes... I go to the bathroom at parties, not to go to the bathroom, but just because I don't know who else to talk to and I'm uncomfortable with my own body. No, that's exactly what we're on the same page. <laughs> like, <laughs> honestly, that's exactly you just you go into the bathroom. You just wait there for a while and text some people. Yeah, to sometimes feel I look better. at Facebook. Sometimes I just walk into different rooms and say, so it looks like I'm going to go talk to someone in the other room. But you're not. And you're I'm just not. Leaving. I'm going to walk into a room and stand there. And then to throw everyone off, I'm going to walk into a different room and stand there. I do that too. It's a system. Parties are uncomfortable. Low self-esteem is hard. Yeah, it's a lot. So uh, we bond on that, clearly. Mm -hmm. I, I think so. Yeah. You have a podcast. It's the Sex in the City. It's You're Such a Sex in the City podcast. It's super fun. I've done it for you. You guys should check it out. Yeah. Yeah. Check out uh, Andrew Gazetta's episode, which is the final episode of season one of Sex in the City. We partied pretty hard. I got pretty drunk. It yeah. was great. A lot of Cosmos. You I, made out with a Christmas tree. Oh, shit. Sort of. I forgot about You'd, that. You didn't make out with it, but like we put we it in a, a suit jacket. Yeah. It was and sweet. You kind of cuddled up. That's the closest really nice. to love I've had in a long time. So it felt kind of good, you know? It was just light and warm yeah. next to you. Yeah. Bristly, but comforting. Just like most of the men I've dated. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hopefully. Those are the good ones. Speaking of love, April, uh, I have a, a kind of a fun question for you. And this is something that I've struggled with. Um, and I am hope you're, you're cool to talk about depression anxiety oh that's the only thing i'm cool to talk about <laughs> awesome this is a kind of a, a question that i have and it's something i've been struggling to navigate how long into a date or a relationship do you bring up the fact that you were in a psych ward like how do you oh yeah because you were in i was too. also in a psych so, like, ward i was also got wow we have that in common i think we should go on a date i think what are you doing later that's nothing you go what later? are you doing what do you want to be doing? You want to go to the thing with me? And go, go, depends we talked what about thing it is. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. that thing. We're I might that not, thing. okay. I might not That's be okay. able to. That's okay. Yeah. We'll talk yeah. about it off air. But yeah, so how do you feel about, how this do you? Is, this is going to be our first argument as a couple. <laughs> you said you were okay with it, but I was like, put myself out I there. Said, it's not fair. I said I was a baby. I have my <laughs> own life, Andrea. Back off. I just feel like we're not connecting like we used to. <laughs> I can't hang out with you all the time. I have a career. <laughs> That's all you care about, isn't it? <laughs> you know I love you. You know I love you. This is our first date, which was canceled. But you know from the one to two months we've known each other, I deeply love you. And that's when I get down on one knee. Oh, it's so beautiful. I want to argue with you about nothing this for is, the rest of our lives. This sounds really, I think I'm actually falling in love. I think we should stop holding hands before. It's too real. It's a little too, you're a great it's, it's actress started, because I'm like feeling things. And it I just started don't know. as a bit. Wow. Became life. No. Okay. Is this why actors fall in love with each other? So I think it's why they fall in love with themselves. <laughs> I don't know about each other. That's fair. But yeah. So that's psych ward business. How yeah, about, yeah, yeah. Psych how ward you, business. Uh, what's so how did you, tell me a little bit about your fun experience there? And then we can talk about 
how long ago that was, how you've dated since. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. OK, so uh, I do not have a good answer for this. I was. First of all, 5150, like a year ago or Represent. so. Yeah, three days of just like chilling out, watching the Goonies with the saddest people. The Goonies. People. <laughs> That's what they had us watch was the Go- We watched That's the Goonies. That's too accurate. <laughs> we watched The Blind Side. Oh, we, at least you got to watch movies. We watched Valentine's Day with Ashton Kutcher. That sounds horrible. No, it was torture. Um, but no, it was a bad place, bad time. Um, and it's been about a year since. So okay. For a good amount of time, there wasn't really dating at all. I was kind of just getting a lot of therapy. I was dating myself. Oh. I'm getting to know me. <laughs> Step aside, world. These ovaries don't need no broveries. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. But anyhow, she's so clearly I don't date very much. Um, That's or okay. ever. Uh, but I've never had... That be a thing come up for me because usually when I do end up dating people or getting into like, you know, the early stages yeah. of like, it might be a relationship, might not, that sort of thing. Um, usually it's with people who I'm already friends with. Yeah, like same. I'm not, yeah, I'm not good at first dates. Oh, I'm not good at Speaking meeting anxiety. new people. <laughs> I just, I don't, I'm like, I don't have enough time in my life is is i don't even get to see my friends as much as i'd like to right i'm not gonna go and have a meal with someone from the internet who may or may not be a person i've been tricked before uh just a pile of leaves that's wearing a coat yeah or a tree. <laughs> or a Christmas tree. Or a Christmas tree in a coat. <laughs> Few drinks in. Who can tell the difference? I know. It's, he said he had mad wood. I agree. <laughs> it, morning wood. Morning wood. And evening wood. Really all the time. Wood. That's what I look for in a man. <laughs> a never ending erection. <laughs> no matter where he is or what we're doing. Like, I want him to take me to the ballet and have a noticeable tent the entire time. <laughs> That we never address. <laughs> no. Uh, so usually, so, and everyone who I'm friends with, so I just end up not meeting new people or like yeah. internet dating. I'm like, who has, I don't have the time or energy for that. I Why really would don't I? don't either. I don't want to meet new people like I do, but I want it to just happen and be convenient and no trouble to me at all in any way. That sounds really nice. That's that's what I aim for. So I don't meet new I think people. Dating, yeah. I have a I have a really tough time with dating, not also just because the time thing. Definitely the time thing for sure. But, yeah, which everyone has. But also like the expectation thing. Like when you meet a person off the internet, sometimes they're like, We should make out. And you're like, I don't know you well enough to like you yet. No, like I you're still just a person. Yeah, like, me. I don't care about you. You could leave right now, and it would be fine. That's exactly, yeah, you're like, so well, why? it was nice to speak to you for two hours. I feel, the way I feel I had, I had some good soup. I'll maybe speak to you for a few hours some other time, but also I might forget about you. Yeah. That, and that's it. I wouldn't invite you to my house. Like, I wouldn't let you just be in my house. Like, I don't want you in my no, house. So I definitely no. don't want you inside me. Like, that's how I feel about it. My body is my temple. It's I, for the Lord. It's <laughs> we pray in it. <laughs> you can only go in on Sundays. <laughs> my parents used to. This is I'm excited for what you're about. To so <laughs> so when I was a kid. So, OK. I had an ex and we used to call fucking church because I wasn't religious, but also because my parents, when I was a kid, every Sunday after church, they would take really long naps and I knew that they were fucking. Mm -hmm. And so like that to me is the funniest thing ever. It's like, we just worship the Lord and now let's ravage each other. (laughs) You know, like what? But it was very like regular and my soul, my soul is clean. My mind isn't. But they, you know, like they still like into adulthood. I think my mom addressed it. She's like, you know, we used to, after church, I was like, mom, I know. Like, we know you're fucking. We we figured it out. If there's fucking happening in a house, people know that it's happening. You can't hide fucking, you know? It's true. (sighs) Parents. I know, right? It's weird. It's how dare they still enjoy a sexual relationship after having kids. 
Seriously. Your ovaries shrivel up like raisins after well, that because they've lost their usefulness. It used to be, it would be nice after a while because like, we would go to my dad's Saturday night. So Sunday was like their day. Like we weren't around because we would be with our dad. So it was like, you do yeah. you, you know, like you just mm-hmm. get it. Girl and dad. Girl and dad. <laughs> Other dad. Not mom and dad. Girl and dad. <laughs> Girl and dad. Exactly. Yeah. No. Yeah. But so to finish answering your question, usually people already know that I'm mentally ill. When That's they start good. dating me. Do you consider yourself mentally ill? Do you use that? Um, I mean, I have problems. I don't, yeah. I think mental illness, like, like I hate to be a drama queen. Like that's, <laughs> that's the, that's, you know, almost are kind of like, I'm not mentally ill. I just take medication so that I can live with my brain <laughs> uh, and have therapy still. Uh, and just crippling dysfunction what throughout is, my life. What's your kind of like diagnosis or like what do you have to work on or, you know, like what's your kind of thing? When like when shit hit the fan uh, and I was um, like going legit crazy and they're like, you're legit. Cra- we got to we got to put you in a room somewhere. Uh, they I was diagnosed with um what a major depressive episode okay. or something like okay. that. I don't know. Like that was the initial thing is they're like, you're kind of freaking the fuck out. Um, <laughs> and then I talked to, I like got in with, uh, my current therapist and who I've been with for the last like year or so. And, um, and after that, it was kind of like, yeah, you're having like a major depressive episode, but also it seems like you just have been depressed always to like <laughs> an okay amount. And I'm like, yeah, that's how I feel. And he's like, yeah, that's people usually treat that. And I'm like, do they? It's like, <laughs> have some pills. Is so, it going well? The pills, you like them? It's they're Well, mm, mm, those side effects. Yeah, Those, what are your side effects? Some I'm brutal, curious. Brutal side effects. Uh, well, for most noticeable side effect. First of all, like there's not a lot that really stands out. Uh, but for probably the first half year that I was on my pills, um, that are like the basis, and then I have a couple others they've added on. Uh, I had daily diarrhea. Jesus, like. Every single day of my life. And I kept being like, hey, I don't like living like this. That's hot for a and first date, though. You know, you just that's <laughs> how I like to open up. <laughs> You're on that diarrhea. On first like, date. like, hey, let's go get some Thai food. And yeah. let's really discuss intimate details. <laughs> uh, no. So and then I kept saying I was like, I don't really think this is making me very much less depressed. And my doctor at the time, who was a piece of shit, uh, was like, well, let's just up the dosage. And I'm like, let's not up the dosage. Let's do anything else. She's like, well, I don't don't think we've given it a real shot. So I'm just going to, we're just going to up the dosage for it. And they kept doing that until it was like four times the dosage it started at or something. It's not. It doesn't make you happier to have just abdominal pain every day of your life and to like go to your therapist's office and be like i need to leave i'm going to shit my pants in my therapist's office that's horrible it was horrible but it's like that sounds like something i'd be pretty sad about yep (laughs) you would (laughs) be correct anything that's good is like totally outweighed by the fact that you might shit at any time yes you gotta worry about that all the time it sounds pretty bad at the movies in the workplace it's fun. It, the doctors who's trying to help you. What a way to reduce just, anxiety. It just make you poop more. Jesus. But any, it's 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 kind of evened out now, and they got me okay. on some other stuff, and also do a little bit of self medicating, lots of uh, probiotics. That's great. Um, you you work with what you got, but anyhow, so less diarrhea now. That sounds so good. So that's good. So overall, yeah, antidepressants like get on them. They're great. They'll definitely fix your life. Have you and have not you, make it worse? Once you've dialed in the dosage, 
Yeah, once you've like failed at having good antidepressants for like a year or so, yeah. then it'll be like, ah, we, we kind of figured it out now. That's sort of. good. So you feel kind of in a place where you're like stable and you feel good most days and like. Mm, it's sort of <laughs> I it's it's more of like the way I think it, it's just I have to be very I'm very OK overall, which is like the big thing. It's just it's a lot, a lot of upkeep like I don't. I don't want to go to the gym ever. No. I'd rather not do that. But it's one of those things where I'm like, mm, I uh, am feeling like screaming at someone. I haven't been to the gym in like three days. And maybe those things are connected. I, uh, started, I did a kickboxing class last week. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. It's so good. That's uh, you, highly recommend. I always wanted to like get a membership at a boxing gym and try boxing. So I thought I'd like that. It's it's a good workout. I don't like hitting people, but a bag, I'll do that. Yeah, I'll, that's I'm down. I'll hit either. <laughs> April Depends. Hatchell's a stone cold killer. <laughs> Depends on the situation. She's five, what are you, five four, five I'm, five? I'm five five. She's five five. She's a stone cold killer. Watch out for her. Exactly. Exactly. Five five. I'm 135 pounds featherweight. So, uh, I'm going to ask, have you ever been in love? Have you like, um, yes. No, I'm not happy about it, but yes. what do you mean? You're not happy about it. Oh, who's, oh, oh, how is that? You don't have a love and lost attitude. You just are like, oh, no one should love anyone. Well, the love, love is beautiful and it's an important part of the human experience and like, you know. Everyone should feel love and, yeah, have the lost love and all that shit. But, like, I usually hold the opinion of I would like very much to just never date anyone or be in love with anyone. And I would like to just have, like, a bunch of close friends and we all just hang out all the time. And you don't have to risk anything. And you don't have to, like, look at it later and be like... Wow, they live with their boyfriend now. And it's weird and I'm sad. Uh, but which is fine. But uh, but is that same? It'd be so much easier if we just weren't so goddamn human. Yeah. It'd be so much easier. I find that human beings generally are the worst and also the best. And that's we're all like that. We really complicate all things constantly in generally like not useful ways. Well, I think we're we all we do our best. Oh, definitely. With what we got. Mm-hmm. And a lot of that is failure. It's just, yes. No, no, no. <laughs> it's a lot of failure. 90, a lot of trying. 99% failure. Yeah. It's that like, oh, any genre, you know, it'll be 95% horrible. And you're like, yeah, that applies to like life too. Though. Everything. Everything Shoes, you try clothes. to do. Yeah. Oh, man. Glasses. Non. Whatever. Stop. Uh, <laughs> bus stops. Yep. Um. You know, first dates. Very tired by that first Fun. dates. All nightmarish. Nightmarish. One of my favorite first dates ever, not because it was good, but because it was bad, is I went out with this guy because he was he was a doctor, but he drew. And I was like, cool. Mm. Like someone who's like smart, but they can draw and like they'll get like maybe they'll be like quirky and fun. Cause a lot of times when I hang out with like science be- people, they don't have a sense of humor and I don't want to hang out with them. It's yeah. not fun. You want so someone like, who has like the, the book smart side, but also like some creativity. Yeah. You know? They're like elastic in their brain. And so I was like, this will be great. And he was the most boring person I've ever met. And I was like, this, I like made up a thing so I could leave early, yep. that kind of thing. And then he texted me afterward and he's like, yeah, so uh, I met someone and I'm going in a different direction. I just wanted to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you don't have to tell me. I was hoping to never hear from you again. That's, so that's totally fine. <laughs> what a what a responsible, responsible Man. Yeah, it was Smart. really funny. He's going to let and you know like, after one date that he's looking in a different direction. There right. Other, he's gotten some other resumes. Uh, it's nothing against you. They're just more qualified candidates. Yeah, exactly. And I was like, that's great. This is perfectly fine with me. I'm going to ask, so I want to kind of go back. So the first person, have you been in love multiple times? Or is it just like you feel like maybe mm, one person? I... Mm. Well, it's one of those hard things to say. I'd say probably a couple of times. Okay. Is what I would probably think. How old were you the first time you were like, oh my God, I think I'm in love with someone? 
first it was um first time I was just like, Oh love uh he had a motorcycle. Um, <laughs> no, it was probably like mm, like high schoolish. Okay. You know, like just that like middle school to high school, kind of that big, you know, growing age. Did you like of, actually date that person? No. Just just best friends. Aww. It's always just it's always just best friends. And it's just like, oh, I just I just want to hang out with you for forever. And that's what friendship is. That's really sweet. And then they start dating other people and you're like, I don't like this. Aww. But like you don't you don't know this shit yet. You don't so know like, what those feelings mean. Yeah. And even even now, like I think there's a very strange gray area spectrum like all that where it's just you're just stuck in the middle sometimes where you're like i really like this person i know that like i have like deep feelings of love for them but like you know what kind of love is it like yeah. is it because it's hard to people, navigate yeah no it's it's uh it's a riddle in a mystery uh that's in a where's waldo book so you can't even find it i think that there's a lot of people that i've met here in LA that like, I love them. Like I can look at, I love this person. They're so great. I love hanging out with them. They're great. But I also can't see myself being in a relationship with them because of, you know, we're just too different. I know that like, because I've had more experience and I've had longer term relationships is like, I just know that there's no way we could make this a thing, but I like you Mm -hmm. and you're fun to hang out with. And I respect you. And I think all these things are great about you. Yeah, that's that's how I feel about a ton of people. But that's that same thing where you have to, like, figure that out by repeatedly failing at it (laughs) and ruining other people's lives or your own life, either of which gives you crushing guilt and emotional shame. Have you ever cheated on someone? I don't think so. No, I haven't cheated on anyone, but also, like. I've had the majority of my experience has been that sort of like, it's not being in relationships. It's just people where it's like, oh, let's give this a shot. Like, you know, no expectations, no whatever. And then it'll uh, quickly devolve and become very tense and awkward. And you'll be out fucking other people and I'll be out fucking other people. That sounds horrible. Which we'll both want, but be kind of resentful about at the same time. So, do you, I mean, like, are you, do you see yourself, are you non-monogamous? What's your sexuality? I mean, like. I mean, I'm you... bisexual. Okay. Um, so just, it's just, just fun from both sides <laughs> and still crippling emotional feelings from both sides. It's the world is your oyster to be rejected by. <laughs> um, no, but uh, so there's that. And then I, like, I am monogamous it's weird because i had like my only real like relationship relationship where it's like this is my boyfriend meet my parents people will it will be like socially the thing that's out there as opposed to being a nebulous nameless thing um was with my high school boyfriend who i dated for like two and a half years or so um right oh um and so there was that, but other than that, pretty much, it's just like weird nebulous shit. That's, and it's like this. It's a very California LA hmm. thing. Yeah, but it's like I had that and that really, when that broke up like that, like it like destroyed my life an okay amount. Because I was like, I don't have friends anymore. Cause How we had old all the same. Uh, 19. Oh, 19 damn. when we broke up. Okay. Yeah. So started at like. 16, 17, broke up at 19. And um, we had all mutual friends. So it became kind of like, well, you know, I broke up with you. So they're going to spend more time with you because you're sad. But I'm sad too. Um, Why did you break up with him? Because I didn't want to be in the same room as him or have him kiss my face. Oh, God, that's (laughs) a great reason. Right? But I still wanted to be friends in the end. And we are. He didn't want to be my friend. I forced him to be my friend. Why? What? Just kept showing up. Why did you up. not want to kiss his face anymore? Like, what happened? Well, I don't, I don't know. I just didn't. Like, I was just like, this is just, you're, we had a sort of like the young 
dysfunctionally codependent relationship. Mm-hmm. You don't really know how to, which is still exactly my relationship style. Your, uh, your, your damn codependency. Oh, oh hell it, yeah. Girl. I get me some of that shit. Like, take it home with me. When I was younger, I was definitely like that. And now that I'm older, I'm just like, I need space. Yep. That's real. But all it's that thing though, where like, you just have to have, you realize you're like, I want you here because I want you to comfort me because I'm upset. But also, I'm annoyed at you because we've spent too much time together recently. And if you're here, I'll become more annoyed and kind of angry for no reason. So I'm going to just do my own thing tonight and like blow off steam. Except for yeah. the nights when you're like, no, I'm really sad. I'm going to make the bad decision. Like, come over and let me be codependent. And then... Let it lead to more problems later. Well, I think I think something that's hard to navigate when you're younger is that we have this idea that our partner is supposed to make us feel better at all times. And instead of like, I feel shitty, my shitty feelings have to do with me and you're not responsible for them. You know, just really taking responsibility for our own feelings is such a leap in maturity that I've seen people even in their 40s still not do with their partners and is just like, dude, you can't, that's not okay. (laughs) You know, it's it's seeing people with their partners who are like significantly older, like middle-aged or whatever. Yeah. Um, and seeing like this very, very specific dysfunctions that seem very juvenile, like that always like, I'm always like, Oh God, you're still like in high school in this one way. And then I'm like, you have a mortgage and yeah. a car. Like, I'm like, you have I'm like, children. This is not okay. I'm like, I'm going to have at least one of those weird things when I'm your age. And I don't, it's not great. And hopefully it'll be like one of the less shit. Could you get up any louder, Al? <laughs> <laughs> that was actually quieter that time. Somehow better. He learned some respect for the podcast. <laughs> oh God. Um, no, I'm always like, what what are going to be my like two or three things? I'm just fucking like, they're just, they're ingrained somewhere in my brain and I'll spend my entire life like, don't be like this. Don't be, but it'll be the gut reaction. That's so it'll still what happen I'm sometimes. scared of. Yeah. Like, it's just you, like, you should be. I'll just be shitty to other people and they're in my life and I'm sorry. Yep. Yep. That's, uh, you just kind of accept that a little bit. Be like, this is going to happen and I will try and make it happen the least amount or in the most harmless ways I can. I'll try and be aware of it as much as I can. But other than that, like, I'm just going to feel real bad about what I do at certain points. Like, I'm going to be like, wow, that was really mean of me. Or like, I know I, I do that. I and literally I so, like I've had times I, where like I treat the other mm. person like cry afterwards. I was like, I was horrible. Yeah. No, where you're just like, I just used you and I didn't really realize it at the time but I did kind of be like this is weird like I like felt something and it's like oh, oh I'm, the, I'm 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 the bad person yeah I don't I've definitely been there be and it's the worst and it feels horrible yep have mm-hmm. you I mean like do you want so this is something that I'm curious about because like do you is like a relationship like a in a standard way of like we have kids and a house and like we do these things like is that something that you see yourself being interested in or not really or like how do you feel about it well i first of all i assume i will never have a house i know uh, i don't either <laughs> yeah no that's not that's not gonna happen apartments think, for life right <laughs> never ending um exactly that's the dream that's the dream we're living uh mm. no but um mm, I'd say I I think it would be uh I would consider it to be a very incredible amazing uh fantasy type unachievable thing like to, winning the lottery. Yeah, to like <laughs> have a meaningful mutually beneficial relationship. Well, just to have a solid relationship that has its ups and downs or whatever, but like where I can live with the other person. Where yeah. like we can live in the same place, the it same small like a- apartment, and it won't turn into a nightmare. It definitely feels like a gamble. You can't escape from. That's where you live. 
<laughs> every like the the part two of every rom com is actually a horror film of trying to escape the other person. <laughs> yes, it, it, that's why it's always like, oh, they're not going to be to get the more. <laughs> I love you so much. And you're just trying your best. And I want to show you some support. But for a man wearing a tie, you'd really think you'd be better at walking than you are. Jesus, April. I have a gunshot wound on my foot. Do you really? (laughs) I'm so sorry. I didn't know that. If I did, I would have made it more specific to that when I made fun of you. That's uh, we have to we have to laugh at that or else I'm a monster. And honestly, I've done much worse things. I refuse for that to be the reason that I'm an asshole. It's it's I've done horrible things. It's what's the it's like nothing. What's the worst thing you've done in a relationship? Where you're just like, like in a relationship? Like when you're dating someone, like the worst thing you've done to another person, you're like, this is not okay. What I just did. Like what I just did was like horrible and monstrous. Let's see. Um I once, honestly, like, I try and be, like, the, like, okay, I need to fucking cool off yeah. for a second. Yep. Um, I once, in the middle of a restaurant, I uh, threw salsa in a man's face. Wow. And it was the spicy salsa. What did he and do? I think he cried a little bit because it was the spicy <laughs> salsa. Oh, I mean, before that. Like, what? why did you throw salsa in his face? Well, it just, it was, it was one of those things where it's like, we didn't have labels or any shit like that. And it was just that they were just like, oh, oh I just bullshit. fucked this other chick. And I just picked up this big thing of salsa and I just threw it in his face and in not, his eyes. That sounds like not a good relationship. It, it, it doesn't, doesn't it? But it lasted for a long time afterwards. That's not great. We had to drive back together because we carpooled to the restaurant. Awesome. It was uh, just just a just a proud moment in my my life. (sighs) This whole. okay, I got to get on my soapbox a little bit. This whole like we be fucking. I care about you. We listen to her feelings like just like all the markers of dating. But the I don't want to be in a relationship dating. Yeah, I got into it very recently with a dude that I dated in the past. And I'm mad at him because he's all up in my Instagram. He's talking to me. He wants to talk to me when we see each other. Like he's always Mm -hmm. wants to talk to me and he wants to be that way. And he like almost came over. And then I was like, hey, like, I'm really glad you didn't come over because like I actually like you. And like if you're not interested in a relationship, like I really can't do that. Yeah. And then he was like, he's like, well, I'm a flirt with you, but you don't have to flirt back. And I was just like. Go fuck yourself. Okay. Well, I don't want to talk to you anymore. I'm going to not respond until you're not weird. Deal with this. It's shitty. Don't be shitty. Just hey, be nice. Why are we doing this? It's manipulation. But if it was in a rom-com, that's it like would be first love. so cute. It's adorable. I just he like- shows up at your house uninvited. He's never <laughs> been there before. How does he know where it it's is? so That's creepy. how much he loves you. I just, like, I don't understand this thing that's happening of like, I want you to make me feel better and I want your emotional support and I want to talk to you and I like you and I'm attracted to you and like all these things. But then I don't want to be in a relationship right now. And that's something that yeah. happens to me so much out here. And it's something I'm so exhausted by. I was going to say, I've been out in, um, I've been living in California since I came here for school. I was like 20 or 21, I think maybe okay. 20. So like five years or so. And literally that is the only, that is almost the only experience That's I've everything. had. And it, and I understand completely what you're talking about. And like, I can't well, deal with it. I'm no. too, t- I'm that's too thing. old. <laughs> that's the thing. No, if you can't deal with it, don't. And that's an entire thing where you're just like, Oh, but I like you. And Oh, I'm sad. And this and that and the other thing, but also like, As long as you keep answering the phone, they're going to keep calling. And you just have, and I've, and I say this, although I've said this many times to the same people and then failed to follow through on it, I I do not recommend, but ideally, literally, like, if you really want to change that shit, the only thing you can do is be like, hey, this is, you know what, we can be friends or whatever, but like, this thing isn't working. And like, I, I'm not down for it. I'm just not going to do it. And you can yeah. do, you want to do whatever you want, go do it. Like, 
God bless, like my feelings are hurt, but also like fucking this is what I'll take and this is what I want. And that's that's it. That's yeah. the end of story is just being like, you know, that's I'm not going to deal with this. It's not even I hate you or how dare it is what or whatever. It's just like between you and you yeah. and being kind of like, mm, I don't want that. What am I going to put up with and what am I not going to put up with? Well, the truth because is because if you do, you can't change them. Right. Only like exactly change your actions towards them and like through that, like towards yourself. I mean, basically what I told this dude is I was like, hey, like, I actually really like you. If you're not interested in being in a relationship, that's fine. You don't have to. I'm not going to make you. I yeah. can't. Yeah. But don't use me and my feelings for you to feel better about yourself because you're afraid of being alone. That's not OK either. And it's really shitty. And then you just never talk to me again. <laughs> it's like, OK. You know what? Problem solved. I know. That's it. Which like it hurts and it sucks and it's horrible. I'm kind of um, OK with like, it, though, because I'm just so I'm tired too. of it. It just happens all the time out here. And I just like don't have the emotional energy to continue investing in people that aren't going to reciprocate that. You know, I'm not going to like when I was younger, like I'd bend over backwards for guys. I'd help them out with shit. I fucking buy groceries, be that whatever. Person. I'd be yeah. that person. And I'm just like, as I get older, I'm just like, I have my own shit to do. I have things that I want to achieve. If you don't respect me as a person enough to understand that, like, I don't want to date you anyway. It's shitty. You're a shitty person. I don't like it. I feel like we're living in the same Jane Austen novel, <laughs> like modern day L.A. Jane Austen novels. Like, so we be fucking right. Yeah. He said to his, you know, gentle woman. It's or something. so that's why those novels like that's why Jane Austen still works. That's why Pride and Prejudice still oh, works yeah. is because oh, you're just like. Yeah. Oh, we do kind of have bad ideas about each other and we do make bad decisions and we do fuck up and like it's that's, so human. That's what make that's what makes things timeless is like, you know, of course, just the whole art thing of it's universal and um but it's not about stereotypes, but it is about um sort of an every man at the same time. It just in that their experiences yeah. are an every man experience, but it's not just uh, cookie cutter. Exactly. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, for sure. Archetypes, not stereotypes. That's yes. what I was trying to think yes. of. Yeah, yeah. Because we all have the kind of patterns. So I kind of want to ask you, um, like, how do you grow up? How are your parents? What's their relationship like? Do you feel like their relationship influenced how you are in relationships? Yes, I think it did. Um, my parents, they're still married. Uh, I always lived in like a stable home or whatever. Uh, <laughs> That's a, it's just cause people are married. It's there like, are many words yes. for it. Um, but I always grew up and, uh, there was always, mm, imbalance, I would say in like the family dynamic. And it was always a real, like their marriage was very difficult for them to keep up. I think okay. like they went through couples, you know, marriage counseling for a while. They, um, you know, were talking about divorce at different times when I was like in elementary school or whatever. Uh, and they're still married today. And like, honestly, I think that like they don't have the same financial troubles and they seem happier today than they did. than I remember it being growing up. You're an only kid, right? You're an no, only no, child? no. I have an older brother. Oh, shoot. Yeah. 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 So one sibling. Um, and, but also growing up in my home, like that was one of the reasons where I'm like, I'd rather never have relationships ever uh, is I always was kind of like, you know, I don't want to be married ever. Uh, what that's what you do. I decided that when I was five decided was like, exactly where you're like, that's what you do when you've given up and you're too weak to go on. Uh, and it is a never ending nightmare and it's horrible for everyone, for you and also for everyone around you. Did your parents like argue a lot? Was there physical arguing or like there was it was it wasn't I grew up in a very like for being from a only half Christian, half like agnostic household. Uh, I grew up in a very Catholic style household. Lots of guilt. Mm. Oh, unending guilt and shame and like just kind of small backhanded emotional degradation. A lot of a lot of passive aggression. I like spent I still have trouble sometimes like knowing how to 
constructively argue with people well, instead That's why you're such of, a good roast battler is just you can look at someone and be like, oh, how can I destroy you a little bit? I know. I'll make fun of the gunshot wound in your foot. <laughs> <laughs> And your tie at the same time. I love you too. (laughs) Ben just wanted you to laugh at that so badly and you didn't, but I still found it funny, so I still did. He's trying to be quiet for the podcast. So he might have thought it was funny. And (laughs) failing. I'm sorry. It's just I've, this entire time I've been like this entire time. I'm like, these are the creakiest chairs in existence. Like, just give us rocking chairs if that's what Seriously, it's going to yeah. be anyway. Lazy boys. I don't even care. Let's Comf- be comfortable. We should stand at our desks. Technically, it's healthier. But anyhow. <laughs> no, I want back problems. We all Buck do. Buck circulation. <laughs> my spinal discs are too in place I'm yeah trying to like i'd like to get some medical leave from if work I could, by just thank you yeah that's what i do that's that's my entire financial plan so your brother's lawsuits older than you younger than you. yes he's older um he lives in oregon currently but he's moving to philadelphia to be with his girlfriend out there okay which she's he, long distance thing that's a lot well, it it wasn't though like they oh, okay. dated for like a couple years i think like one year of just dating um okay. and then another year of dating and also they lived together they like moved in together okay for a year and then she was going to philadelphia for school okay. um, but he was finishing up school in oregon so they've had i think like six months or so of separation oh that's so didn't overlap. workable no, it is. It is. And when like there's still a, like oh, he sorry. flies out there for like holidays and stuff like that. So they still they seem uh, the like the most remarkably shockingly functional couple that like <laughs> I know of. Like I'm like you're like just happy and good and supportive of each other and like thankful that you're both there and is loving. He, and it's. I don't know how you did that. Like, is he younger bravo. than you? Oh, no, he's older. Oh, fuck. He's what? getting he's he's uh, graduating with his Ph.D. How is he so functional? Three years older than me. By he was dysfunctional when he was young, like he wasn't mm. going to graduate high school. You OK. Know? And he okay. like had a nightmare girlfriend who was a scary monster in college. Um, and we all fucking hated her, but we couldn't say it because yeah. she'd like come for the holidays. We're like, hello. And then my brother she married left that the person. Room. It happens. <laughs> awesome. It happens. And they leave the room and you're like, what a fucking bitch. Did you see what blah, 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 that sort of thing? Yeah. She was my brother's wife is more like. Like they're codependent in a really unhealthy way. Yep. And that's why my brother hasn't spoken to me since May. Because he abandoned me in a foreign country, and I was like, "Hey, that was really shitty." And he which was foreign like, country? Poland in the winter. It was oh. great. And I was really mad. Oh, that's. <laughs> I that's, went to visit wow. him, and I was locked out of his apartment, and I couldn't get in contact with him because he and his wife were celebrating Valentine's Day without me. Because I went to Poland to visit them, and they lived there, and she couldn't wait one day, and she threw a fit, and so they had to celebrate. And that's, I wandered around Poland by myself for nine hours, and it was shitty. No, that's that's um. Yeah. It was pretty shitty behavior. That's a, bad, that's a bad thing to do. And I was like, hey, that's mean. That's not a good way to treat people. That should probably be addressed. And in, he was in like. In any relationship, yeah. really. Familial, romantic. Yeah. If someone abandons you in Poland for nine hours, like. I'm pretty pissed about it. Bring it up. Yeah. You know, be yeah. like, maybe we should talk about this. Right. And he was like, I'm going to double down on the shittiness and stop speaking to you for not respecting my relationship. And I was like, okay, what? Yeah. You're just like, well, all right, then that's, we're in agreement. And his wife is the one who sent me to the psych ward. So. Oh, well, fucking come on. That's. Yeah. So I'm pretty mad. You're already in the hole for that. Like, I already am pissed at you for (laughs) having me institutionalized. You know, it's going to be hard to repair that relationship, you know? It's just like what she's like. Family. What? (laughs) Sometimes (laughs) they abandon you in Poland. (laughs) Sometimes they put you in a psych ward. I mean, we've all been there. (laughs) Thanksgiving's a crazy time. It's going to be great this year, you guys. (laughs) Christmas was a joy. Yeah. Did you hear mom's out of rehab? <laughs> she wasn't let out they kicked her out so yeah. whole family together is that what happened to you no oh no. okay i was like no. i was like is she pulling from something specific this felt like it got specifically real well that's what makes a great improv scene wow details and 
Let's see. Are you an improver as well? Yes, I am wow. an improver. Improver. Improviser is improviser. Oh, uh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. But anyhow, yep, that is my cool. joy. And everyone who I'm friends with shame and annoyance. Does not respect it. <laughs> Uh, no, I no. feel like it's really, who does it's paying off in these moments, though. I got to be on, you know, like in the podcast, the conversation it, is fun. It, yeah, exactly. It pays off in a million different ways, which no one who is not an improviser will ever appreciate or give you any credit for. They just make fun of you for it. And you're like, well, you know, that's OK, then I'm going to keep doing it anyways, because fuck you. But it's fun. It. Yeah, it is. Follow your joy. If your joy is. I uh, I have one of my favorite, prof- I guess he's my professor. He was like my boss and I did an internship with him. Mm-hmm. And something he used to say to me is do what you love. And if you get good enough at it, someone will pay you to do it. And his specific example is that he had a friend that got really good at pouring beer. Like he could pour beer. So like the foam comes up or like just a little bit drips off the side and he could like control that. And he now this, gets paid just to do that. That he sounds like an alcoholic magneto. <laughs> Like it's like he can control it. Like he can hold the glass upside down, pour the beer. It defies gravity. It's a remarkable skill. He works in publishing. <laughs> that would have been the best end of that. He got really good at pouring beer, and now he cries a lot. <laughs> That's what now alcoholism is. It's he just cries a lot. a lot on the shoulder of the woman. Who he refuses to call his girlfriend. Fuck that. That is the I'm most. I'm out of here. I'm so angry. That's the most real thing. I ever. think that I honestly think that that's why there's more bisexual women in Los Angeles is because I'm just so tired of this men thing. I get it's a lot. I get it. Well, I mean, I think that's why our relationship is going to work. I can't wait to see it blossom. Okay, for Valentine's Day, we're going to abandon your brother in a foreign country. (laughs) Can we? You know what's funny? So this was actually, so this is, that was only my second worst Valentine's Day of all. (laughs) The first worst Valentine's Day is I broke up with my fiance the night before Valentine's Day. (laughs) Oh, what, what, what happened if I could So... Here's what happened is oh, oh, <laughs> this makes me so happy. I'm so happy. Like, so I dated that's this guy. The saddest thing I've ever heard. It was really intense. I'm not a big fan of the holiday. I could really do without it. No, no, nobody likes could really, it. Honestly. Not a fan of nobody, Valentine's Day. Nobody likes it. We just really put up with it. Don't like it. Um, so what happened was is I dated this guy. We started dating when I was 22. He was like 27. I think maybe I was 21. So we were really young. Yeah. And um, we dated for like four and a half years and we met at school. So he had like gone back to school. He already had a kid, though. So when we met, his kid was five and we dated for like four years. So by the time I left, his kid was like nine. But we were kind of in this place where like we were living together. We had and we were a couple with an adult male roommate living with us, which is never fun to like live with a couple And then the dude was his friend. So like sometimes he and I would argue and the dude would take his side and like get in our arguments. Oh my God. It was a big problem. Yep. And then every other weekend we had to drive three hours to pick up his son. And then his son would be with us all weekend, which is like also pretty stressful on a relationship is like you have a son that comes for the whole weekend. There's a lot of driving involved. There's an adult roommate situation. I want to be an artist. He can't leave the state because of his son. It was just like a lot was going on. It's a lot of stress in a way that um, if that, like that can totally be a relationship. But it's that's totally the thing can. where it's like, it's got to be a of fucking solid relationship. Yes. Like and you need to have built up a foundation. And what ha- happened was, is he was getting progressively more and more distant. And we were like arguing a lot. And he would just like berate me for nothing. Like I would just be like, he'd be like, you didn't do the dishes enough. And I'm like, you haven't paid me for groceries in three months. Like, (laughs) I, what are you doing? Like, he would just like come and like yell at me about stuff. And he was like traveling a lot for work. And like, so we just didn't really spend a lot of time together. And so I was like, hey, like I haven't seen you in a week and we have your son this weekend. Instead of picking your son up Friday night, can we pick him up Saturday morning so that we have time together? Because he'd been out of town for a week Mm -hmm. and he was like, 
he, and something I would say every time I wanted to travel, anytime I wanted to do anything, all he would say was, if that's what you want, you have to do it yourself. I won't do it with you. So every time I went out of this, like one of my goals, is like, I want to leave the country. I want to travel. I want to do these things. And he just kind of refused to even try to make that a goal with me or to like experience that with me to, or work to towards it. Consider, um, a way that it could you work. Could make it happen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He wouldn't even have a conversation with me about it. Mm -hmm. And it was one of those things where just like arguing all the time and it kind of came to a head and I was like, I, I haven't seen you in a whole week. I want us to have some alone time together before your son gets here. And you know, when your son gets here Friday nights, he, we go right to bed anyway. You know, we, we are mm. not spending quality time with him on a Friday night cause we don't get home till 11 at night. So we yeah. pretty much all go to bed and it's like, that's not unreasonable. And we have to find a way to kind of like navigate this. Like this is an issue for me. And I think that this is like, Please consider this as a way of dealing. Yeah. And with his it, response with me. was like, just reach out like, to me in some way. His response was just like, well, maybe we should break up. And then I was just like, maybe we should. Like, cause, and when, even when he proposed to me, I was like, hey, I'll say yes, but we have a lot of problems and we have to solve this before I'm willing to spend forever with you because I'm not happy today. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the ring. Oh, this is fun. I'm so I told him, excited. I don't, here's, here's what I feel about diamonds. I hate diamonds. I don't like diamonds. I think they're stupid and I think they're cheesy and I didn't want one. I just, he go. was an artist. I was like, will you just make me a ring? Like you can make it out of wood. Like you can make it out of metal. You can make it out of anything. I just like, I want you to make it. And I want to know that you care about me. Mm -hmm. And instead he got me this like really fucking ugly diamond. It was really sharp <laughs> and it like snagged all my sweaters Cause like I work with my hands. So like I can't yeah. wear stuff. I really need just like a band. Like I can't wear stuff that like catches. Yeah. And I was like, okay, maybe this is like, like his mom had committed suicide when he was young. And I was like, maybe this is like his mom's or something. And I was like, hey. it had sentimental. Yeah. Whatever. I kind of like assumed that it had some sort of sentimental value because I had specifically asked him for something more tactile or like utilitarian. Mm -hmm. And he was, I was like, Hey, so like, well, what's the story? Like, where'd you get this ring? And he was like, it was the cheapest one at the pawn shop. <laughs> That's marriage material. And right I was there. like, I don't think this is not great. So we broke up the day before Valentine's Day. And then I basically like I called my friend Mary, who I live. I, I wound up. She it was one of those things where she's like, you're going to come stay with me, girl. And I like packed up the dog and I packed up my shit and I yeah. went to her house. Yeah. It was very dramatic and like that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And um, I wound up seeing I lived with them for like a year and a half and it was great. I love living with Mary. But when like the day after I broke up with him, I like talked to her about it and she was like, I'm glad you broke up with him. There's something I've been wanting to tell you and I'm not sure how to tell you, but he had been texting her like late at night, like when he was off on business trips, when he would get drunk, he would text her and like he, she was like, well, at first it was like advice about you. So like, I'm, because I'm your friend, like I wanted to answer it and like, oh, so advice like about respond or be like, oh, yeah. you know, if you guys are having trouble, then like, yeah, like I know Andrew in like a different capacity. Right. So maybe my insight would help. Would help. Yeah. So she's like, at first it was that she's like, but then it got into like, he would say stuff to her. Like, um, I wish I'd met you sooner. How do you know your husband is the one? Cause my friend is married. Yeah. And she, this was before they were officially married, but they were fiance. And I had always wondered, cause like I would hang out with her and her fiance. And I was like, I would tell my boyfriend at the time, I was like, Nico seems weird. Like, why is he being so weird? Like, what's the deal? What's he like? Cause he would be really standoffish. Mm -hmm. Well, what it was is Nico knew that my boyfriend was texting his girlfriend all the time oh and he was God. uncomfortable about it. And he didn't know cause Nico can't lie. He's like one of those really sweet, the, noble the people. Expressive face. Yeah. He just can't lie and he doesn't feel good about lying. And it just like makes him really upset. Like he's just like such an honest person that like he couldn't be cool around my boyfriend because he was mm -hmm. being shitty to his. Yeah. Cause also that's like, that's a big thing. It was really fucked up. And then, so like then a thing happened. And once I found out about that, I like went back to my fiance and I, like we had already broken up, but I was like, still had hope that maybe we could get together. And I was like, how many women did you do that with? And he's like, I don't think you want to know the answer to that. 
And I was just like, okay. Like, that means that I definitely don't want to know. Yeah. Uh, in terms of, like, I don't want to know you anymore. Yeah. Oh, also, fun thing. So, also the Valentine's Day when I was in Poland, the dude that broke up with me, a dude had broken up with me, like, a month before and had kind of, like, not given me a lot of good reasons, texted me that morning to tell me that, like, hey, by the way, you know, like, I don't want you to feel like it's you. Like, I just have a lot of problems. Like, but he had to text me on Valentine's Day and then I got abandoned in Poland. So it's like, it's really like a, a tough tie between which is worse. But, you know. Lost in a foreign country where, um, do they speak English there? Or is it? Some people do. Some it's mostly do. you got to speak Polish, though. Yeah, that's what I was kind of. Wondering yeah, I don't speak was, Polish. I know a lot of those countries. They um, so it's a lot of like have English is like a second like, language. Yeah, lost yeah, yeah. in a foreign country where you cannot communicate with those around you because fun. you're abandoned by family members or break up with the fiance the night before. Get the text the day of um oh the fiance the text the day of was was that poland in poland okay so that's not from my fiance it was from a dude that i'd broken up with okay yeah that was was like i'm a flirt with you dude that i just cut off again oh yeah that oh yeah no cut that shit (sighs) motherfucker if he wants to come back and like go on a date with you he can totally do that but until that point yeah go do whatever the fuck it is you do with the rest of your time dating is fun you not it's spend so, it here it's so fun i love dating it's Re- so great relationships are easy they're the worst I so know. we all know that we I all know, know that oh god i want to so i i want to close this podcast something that i always ask is to kind of close it out Mm -hmm. On a great note is like what scares you the most about relationships or being in a relationship or like when you feel that feeling of like, oh, my God, I think I have feelings for this person. I panic. I like to run real fast. That's my go to. But like, what is that feeling you you get? Do you mean run fast physically or metaphorically? Both. Yes. Good. Yeah. Sometimes I just like I got to leave the room. I care about you too much. You know, it's like very real. Cause I get anxious about how much I care. And, um, I want to know kind of like, what are you, is there anything that really scares you about being in a relationship or that like you feel when you feel that love feeling, like you get this fear, like what your fear is. My, uh, I would. Okay. So like, I totally get that, like run away thing. So it's like, Ooh, I don't like that. There are stakes now, you know, yeah. like they're too high. It's yeah. too risky. Could be very one-sided, but like my, uh, uh, just from my life and my experiences and whatever, uh, my very uh, firmly held mm, convictions that like I have in the back of my mind when it's anything to do with like relationships or whatever uh, is that getting into a relationship, I very firmly believe this and uh my therapist works very hard to change that but she hasn't got there yet but being in a relationship is the thing that you do uh before you start to hate someone and then like it's and then everything falls apart and then a person who you used to be good friends with uh will not speak to you anymore and is now gone from your life forever that's that is my firm like some subconscious part of me firmly believes I'm like relationships is that's what you do uh, where you like have a lot of fun for a while and then you start to hate each other very legitimately and then this person who you've relied on never speaks to you again ever that and they're just horrible. gone from your life so you better just stay friends. Cause then they'll stick around. That's no, that's yeah. That's the legitimate fear. That's so scary. I've been single. uh, (laughs) I've been single, technically speaking for coming up on seven years now. So I'm sure that has nothing to do with it. (laughs) I think, but I think that that is like, that's something. So I guess I've never really shared my fear, but my fear about being in a relationship is that I'll get lost in that other person. Cause that's something that I tend to do is I tend to just like, I, I love, love that codependency. Oh, oh, that's my jam. Drink that Kool-Aid. Oh, I got to take care of this person. They need me. They need me to do and this. I they need, need them and we'll both die I need, if we don't yes. act out this weird ingrained thing. 
I get that where like, I'm like, if this person doesn't need me, they'll leave me. If this person, if I'm not doing enough for this person, they won't stay. And part of that, like, I've never felt safe as a person. Like my early, like, like <laughs> there was one time where my mom's like, why are you so anxious and afraid all the time? I was like, I think uh, I read some studies about like anxiety and fears in childhood. And remember how everything was terrifying when I was a child? Yeah, that's probably why, you know, <laughs> it's like, it can't have they helped. They don't do it. <laughs> it that's, can't have helped. Remember when we were afraid people were going to murder us? That was fun. That's scary. So like, there's something in my brain that's just like hardwired to like run or just like a fight or flight thing. And I have to feel mm -hmm. with that other person that like, that I have to feel secure in them, but I never really do unless I know that they need me for something or that I'm contributing to them or that I can help them. Like if that person doesn't have a void that I'm filling, I don't know how we are or like what that is, mm -hmm. what this dating thing I, is. Okay. Random little thing. That's, that is absolutely legitimate. Um, first of all, uh, I have a book recommendation. Oh, for what you. is it? Is it codependency? Know, no more. Nope, it's not. Okay. But it's this dope, dope woman. She's incredible. Um, and I actually have one of her books in my purse right now, which I've been okay. reading. And they all have really horrible, stupid titles. But also they're literally, they're some of the only actually insightful, like how your brain works type okay. books that I've read. And um, there are two that I've read, both of which I loved, which is uh, The Dance of Intimacy <laughs> and the other one's the dance of anger. I know. Okay. I know. And I would not have read these either. But like a good friend of mine was like, well, there was a point where I was talking with my husband about like we were maybe going to get divorced. And I read these books and they kind of just made a lot of sense to me. And it just helped me to think about things in a different way. So I was like, oh, you know, like what? I'm not in a relationship, but like, you know, I'm interested because I know that I'm have ingrained dysfunction. Uh, so let's take a look at that. And, um, it's just really good stuff, like, or just very interesting way of looking at it. Like Kathleen, how's it going, Daniel? You good? <laughs> awesome. Now my friend Kathleen, um, who was the woman who recommended them, she said, because she was married to her husband, husband was a professor at the time. And, uh, so he was working long days, Coming right. home late, you know, which was what it was. And she was sort of stay at home raising their daughter. Oh, that's exhausting. It is. But like the point is, is she like had a night where she was like, oh, you know, uh, Mark, her husband agreed to watch their daughter so that she could go out with some like girlfriends she had who she hadn't seen in mm -hmm. like a few months or something for like drinks and just to relax. And Mark came home after work and he was just kind of like. I don't think I can do it. Like, it's the end of the week. I'm exhausted. Like, I just, I need to rest and kind of go to bed. I can't stay up and watch our daughter, you know, until it's her bedtime uh, while you're out with your friends. And so, which is like a thing that would come up before or whatever. And she said that she just kind of like, it's kind of like, okay. And she just kind of went in the other room and like kind of thought about it. And what she ended up doing um which was sort of because she's just trying to think in a different way about mm -hmm. these things. Um, so what she did is she's like, OK, well, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to call up a babysitter. Yeah. And we're going to have a babysitter come over. And if you stay up and watch Genevieve and the babysitter is just sitting there doing nothing, that's fine. But also if you like want to turn in early or like relax and do your own thing or whatever, babysitter's there so she can watch Jenna just this way it's just I'm still able to do my thing and it's not this big thing of you fucking said that this or yeah. that or the other it yeah. just it was a way of being like it's important to me that I do this and I'm gonna try and find a way to do it without making it a big be deal a big deal in our relationship because it doesn't have to be you yeah. know it's it's not but like yeah so it just things like that. And I read it and that's exactly what I had found. So I was like, wow, this like 
I've never thought about things this way with my brain. There just has to, I feel like a lot of relationships, like people let each other down and people take it personally. And it's like, no, like I fail myself daily. It's not about you. Like, I'm not just failing you. Like, yeah, people yeah. failed. We will fail. We're not going to be able to meet every expectation. And how do you forgive that person and continue to navigate that? I think it's that. Yeah. Relationships great. get really fucked by guilt. Yeah. Really well, really fucked by Like it. when you make, when you're constantly bringing old stuff up or making the other person feel guilty like that, there's no way to be happy. Then you're just yeah. with this person that makes you feel horrible. But also, but also like that's something that like you need to find a way of dealing with it. Like yeah. either deal with the problem or you got to bring it up because the reason those things happen sometimes it's just like, you know what? Yeah, I've got my ammunition for when the next time you have an argument and I have 10 things I want to yell at you about. But like other times... Like it's that you're not addressing it. And so when one thing comes up, you just can't stand it anymore. And yeah. Everything out. pours out. Yeah. You know, it's just the floodgates open. And we're all drowning. We're all drowning. <laughs> Entire village is dead. I never learned to swim, but a tsunami. That sounds a great time to learn. Hey, uh, this has been fun. I'm going to get mm. out of here. Where can people find you? Uh, Google. Google my oh. name, April Lotshaw. You'll, if you want to find me, uh, you'll figure it out. Do you have the um, social medias? Do you have the website? I have Facebook. Do you have do that? A horse I have a, a Twitter account. Okay. If you Google me on Twitter, that'll come up. Mainly, uh, please give a try to listen to my podcast. You're such a sex in the city podcast. It's so fucking fun. Thank it you so much delightful. for coming. Yeah, of course. Thank you, Andrea. Bye. Bye.